Magic 102.1. Your boy Mad Hatter is back with the Mad Hatter Show. One of my first guests that decided to come through, pop up, say what up to your dial. LL, better known as Latoya Luckett, is in the what's building. What's up? What's yeah. up? It's so good to hear your voice. Well, that's nice of you. First of all, I appreciate you. Uh, I haven't talked to you in a very long time. Usually when I talk to you, it's Rob is going to call you and we all have a f- conversation at the same time. But it's good to be in the same building with you and see your lovely face. The last Aww. time I think I actually saw you physically, life was different for you. It was pre-kids. It's pre yes. a lot of movies and everything. We've talked on phones, but I don't think I don't think we actually no. literally seen each other probably Wow, we probably haven't seen each other face to face in probably five, maybe six, six years. years. Had to be six years because Gianna's five. Wow, wow. Yep, my daughter's five. Well, so. let me cross my lace. Girl, what's been going on in your life? <laughs> <laughs> All the things, okay? I don't think we have enough time. Girl, yes. what's been going on? You, you, you've had an amazing life when you really sit down oh, and think about you. it. You have. Think about it. Here it is. Some young ladies start off in a group. You don't know that this group is going to be one of the biggest girl groups ever. You no know what idea. I'm saying? You mm-hmm. don't know that. Uh, you just being a kid and things are just happening and happening. And the next thing you know, the biggest girl group in the world changes things. So now you got to change with things. Yep. And my goodness, I think your change was prolific. Um, no, think about it. You know, a lot of times when things like this happen, it can shake you up. It can change you. You can... Lose it. You can lose it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because let's be honest, <laughs> these things become our identities. Yes. And uh, all of a sudden you don't have this thing that's giving you your identity. What do you do now? And mm-hmm. man, your bounce back was strong. You kept moving on with the music. Then you started doing these movies. Yeah. How many movies under your belt now? I, I 19, don't 20, know. 21, 22, It's 23. a few of them. It's a few of them. So you've, you, the bounce back is real. So I want to get into all that. We'll get into all that because I want to know, you know, after DC, mm-hmm. what's Latoya Luckett's first thoughts? You know, because it could have easily went left. What? So we'll we'll start there, but we'll do I that in a bit. Do that pivot. We're gonna get we're gonna get into. <laughs> can I, can I call Torn a classic? You I, you most you most certainly can. <laughs> you most certainly can. Uh, we'll yeah. get into why I'm back at a later time. We'll get into why I left at a later time. I don't even really know if I want to really get into that. I mean, yeah. I think there was a lot of uh, curiosity when I left because I left very unexpectedly. I did not get fired. Uh, I know that's making some of the haters upset because some people want to know or hope that you got fired. How could you? You're the voice of Houston. No, 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 no. no, no I mean, because no, no. you that's did nice I not call you? you? That, that, I called you. I was hot. I thank you because I didn't know. I was like, well, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> this was new news to me. I think we were just talking about something outside of that and. That came up in our conversation. And I say, wait, hold on, time my flag on the play. What do you mean? Well, let me just say this. And this is probably as if, if you follow me on social media, I, I've given this story generically and I never went into detail. And I'm not going to even go into detail here. But one day you just get, you know, life gets you to a point where you say, I've had enough at this point. So mm-hmm. at that point, I just had enough. My brother had passed away. My mother had almost mm-hmm. passed away. A lot of people don't know this stuff, you know. I was going through whatever I was going through and then all it took was one person to say something to tick me off. And I'm like, uh, people got it confused that I have to do this. And so I kind of like just split and no one knew. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> no one. But that's a whole nother story. But we're here now. <laughs> we're here Look now. At us. <laughs> we're here now. We are we're blessed. in a good, yes. My friend God got some good. babies and some movies babies. under her belt. I don't yes. know if she's still doing music. Latoya Luckett is in the building. building. What's up? And I'm What's happy up? that you're here. And thank you, by the way. There was a few people that reached out during the time of separation. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I salute those people and I thank them. And I, hopefully we'll have them on the air this week, too, as one of the co-hosts on Aww. the all new that had a great. show on this afternoon's on Magic 102.1. But enough about me because we, we'll have a lot of time to get into me and uh, learn about me. And I'll learn about y'all right now. I want to talk to my good friend Latoya Luckett. So we're going to the time where all of a sudden there is a collapse in D.C. I don't have to go into detail. Y'all from Houston, you know what D.C. is. But this leaves <laughs> Latoya Luckett in a conundrum. And at that point, she got to make some decisions. She can either fall or fly. You chose flight, but not at first. At first, you got to go through something. What did you go through first when you like, uh oh, things ain't popping, son? And I'm, I'm bringing this all up so we can uh-huh. get up to date with Latoya Luckett. Some of y'all might have forgot all these things. Like, oh yeah, I forgot when that happened. Well, you know, not the separation of the group, but 
your you mind, know, the, the, your, your state of mind when that kind of situation occurs. Hey, man, I you know, busting the left while I'm biggity busting the right. Y'all know what song that's from. That's kind of what it kind of had to happen. <laughs> I had to pivot, you know what I mean? Did somebody help you through your pivot, though? Was oh, some, yeah. Was it a family member? My family. Come yeah. on, you know how Houstonians are. Right. You know, we, and I'm not saying that, you know, everyone, all cities aren't like this, but there's something that happens when you land in Houston, everybody becomes family. So when you actually have family here, we are just warm people. Mm. Um, and I am blessed to have such an amazing, loving family who has always been supportive of me anytime that I was down or kind of like didn't know which direction I wanted to go in. They would help point me in the right direction. No doubt. And um, I have wonderful friends as well. And yes, there was a brief moment where I was kind of like, hmm, okay, what do I do next? And I quickly um, fell on my knees and asked God to direct my path, and he did. And I really, it was really me getting out of the way, Mm. you know, because that was a situation that I was in from a little girl. That's really all that I knew. That's right. You know, so that's, that's actually what made it hard because it's really the only thing that I'd been doing my whole life. And Mm. so when you have to quickly shift and change paths and you're unsure of the next, you know, steps, um, that's what makes it it tough. And the only thing that I knew to do was pray. And Mm. I did. And also I felt the need to kind of get away from my normal. So I went to Atlanta and um, start working there a little bit, going back in the studio. And it still didn't feel right. You know, I think that I was like, okay, let, this feels normal, right? I'm supposed to be in a studio, right? That's that's the next thing, huh? Yeah. And it was like, nah, that's wrong, all wrong. And so I left there, um, moved to L.A., and I thought I'd do a little bit of modeling. You know, I thought I could do some background vocals in the studio for different artists. Um, and I started you know, going back in the studio again when I was in L.A. and met up with some incredible people. I've Noontime, Chris Hicks, Terry Ross, shout out to y'all, Dave Young, Denny Chung. Um, and we just start working. And unbeknownst to me, I was creating a project. <laughs> like, wait. Y'all recording, but <laughs> now you, we don't, got five you, don't, songs. you don't know that you record. You just recording to see if you yeah. still have the desire to keep moving in that direction. Exactly. It was no, I really had no intent on getting another record deal or like, so when did you know becoming that, a solo oh, artist? We, yeah, this is where I need to be moving. When did you know that, oh, okay, this is where he's trying to push me to? When they hit playback. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, was there a, a particular minute. song? Like, I don't want to say. Oh, I don't want to assume that it was torn. Was was no, it some it was song a, that played, and you like, mm, you know what? I think I can do this mm-hmm. solo because that's you know when you in a group, you get used to a group concept. Exactly, then to split away. And that was the hardest thing. Had to like performing live. That's when I would have the anxiety attacks because I'm used to looking to my See, left I never and my knew right. That you even had oh man! Attacks. Before every performance, I still deal with that really? to this day. And we, how many years pass? But I I'm don't so believe used you, to. But I'm believing you because you're saying it. Well, you know what helped with that? Acting, learning mm. how to become a different character. So when I'm on stage, like I know B got Sasha Fierce. I'm like, you know what? I understand why she does that. Mm. You really got to become someone else to kind of shake that fear off sometimes or just, you know, it really helps you to get into whatever emotion you need to be in for the song. Um, but yeah, my first song that I heard uh, was You Got What I Need. And that's probably like the first or second song I recorded. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay, I'm doing the harmony parts. I'm doing the highs and the lows. Okay, um, <laughs> this is kind of sounding all right. <laughs> Next thing you know, Chris Hicks and Terry started shopping me a deal. Damon Thompson, Damon started shopping a deal. Um, we landed at Capitol and boom, I had a deal and... You know, it was time to put out a single. First, the label didn't want to go with, you know, they wanted to go with a club record. Because, you know, at the time, female artists had to be in, like, little shimmy skirts and, you know, do club <laughs> records. Um, and so, I, yeah, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to sing about it. You know, I wanted a song that was going to be relatable, that was going to really be heart-piercing. And Torn was what I was going through at the time. So mm. I was like, look. A lot of your music always sounds like it's something you're going through at the it time. It is. Most of the time it is. And here's the funny thing, and I just got to say See, this. you know I think, too much of my business, so I need you. <laughs> I already know he's going to go with this conversation. I, you, I ain't got time. Because, well, listen, it's one of your biggest songs. Yes. And yes, that person that at that particular time, Slim Thug, we all still love him. Y'all hey, still Slim. friends. I, 
thug out this I, one. I, I just think it's so funny that to me that was such a bold thing because you know Houston kind of like was in y'all business, so it's very, All in our it's business. very. Thank God it wasn't blogs at the time. Thank God there was no like media oh, takeout been, shade was, room. But the city was aware. What, when yeah. it when it was up, they knew. When and it, it wasn't no camera phones. Right. So right. they really couldn't. There was no footage. There wasn't no footage, but. It was enough talking to go around. Yeah, and it was a few little aware. camera, uh, little disposable Kodaks running around here. <laughs> but still, getting pictures. it's still a bold move to kind of have this relationship conversation in song and then bring on this person in song. I still think that's a bold well, move. Well, hold on. And Time there's out. a couple of remixes that you did, too, I think of that. Some, wasn't there a version with... That was the remix, Hatta. The one with JD and Rick Ross and Mike Jones, that was the official remix. Oh, Your boy. really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think, you know, Hold the, up, the first of all. Let's pause for a minute. Because <laughs> we're going to have some truth. Let's, let's pause and then let's come back and let's get into this. And I promise y'all, we're going to move on because LL got so much great stuff going on in life right here, now. So, but I just want to know this little part of the yeah, story. We're going we're gonna to remember it and then we're going to move on like we're doing with my life. We're please gonna do. Move on. We're going to please move on from this. All right, New Mad Show on Magic 102.1. What is up, Magic family? Yeah, we'll one day we'll have some time where we can sit around the old fireplace and reminisce about, hey, what happened to Hatter and why is Hatter doing this and why Hatter doing that? Haters are mad anyway. The people who love you, they still want to know the story. We might get into it at some time, but I got a better story now. Oh, my gosh. It's the story of Latoya Luckett uh-huh. and the remix Torn. Uh, now, in the last episode, if you were listening to the Mad Hatter Morning Show, we found out that Latoya Luckett, actually the remix that we all grew up on here in H-Town with Slim Tha, that, my good friends, was not actually supposed to be the remix. No. We return with Latoya Luckett with the full story. <laughs> <laughs> the introduction <laughs> is sending so, me. So, so the original oh version gosh. of the re- I, I didn't notice, so this is really great. Yeah. I love this. See, this uh-huh. is what I love about some of these old nostalgic stories. Yeah. So, regular version, yeah. remix, JD, Rick Ross, who else? Mike Jones. Mike Jones mm-hmm. is on it. Yes. What happened there? Because I don't know this story. It's on mm-hmm. you now. So I'm in rehearsals for a tour. Um, I was headed out on tour with Mary J. Blige at the time. And my manager, Terry Ross, tells me to step outside. I'm like, what's going on? He was like, uh, it's a remix to the record. I said, what, to what record? He was like, to touring. He was like, you want to listen to it? I was like, yeah. He, I said, who did it? He was like, yeah, you might want to sit down for this one. I said, what, you, <laughs> what you mean? He takes me to the car. He takes me to the car. Plays the record and immediately when Slim's voice comes on, I'm like, you, I know you effing line. Like, <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. And we hadn't, me and Slim hadn't talked in a minute. You know, okay. this was a breakup moment. So I hadn't talked to him or nothing. And I come to find out, you know, it's been service to radio and everything. What? <laughs> he done put his own remix out. And I'm and listening to the lyrics. Hold on, stop. Slim just did a remix and he Slim put it out. Slim just did a remix and he put it out. I did not know that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he's like, uh, you should be thanking me. I'm ah! like, first of all, first of all, and you know, when this is your ex and y'all ain't talked to the minute and then you listening to the lyrics and he's like, you know, it wasn't like he was trying to get the give back. I don't know what he was really trying to say, but it was <laughs> it was kind of like his truth. Right, it which was which was cool because yeah. you know, how do I say this? Slim is slim, <laughs> and he has a certain way of his expressing himself. Absolutely. And I feel like he did it best through song. You okay. know what I mean? So this was honestly the most honest I had heard him be about like his feelings and oh, where he wow. was at the time. And it also helped me give grace and helped me get a little bit of understanding as to why things weren't working. You know what I mean? Because mm. if this is what he was feeling like and he was kind of for real torn on whether he wanted to be out in the, you know, in the streets in the club doing his thing or really settle down well, we and marry. be in the streets. I, uh, <laughs> Sorry, Slim. You know I love you, big dog. Different conversation for another time. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. But you know, it's, you know, and here's my thing. Here's the thing that I love about Slim. He's so consistent. He's who he is. Yep. He's as real as it get. He ain't changing for nobody. Yep. And all I can do is respect that. Mm. And that's what, you know, that's why I have love for him. That's why he has love for me because we can learn to love and disagree. Like, we not in the same place. Probably will never be. Um, <laughs> but at that moment, it was kind of like, I was so, my emotions were crazy because I, I was kind of like, I know this Negro didn't. Um, 
after especially when to pay for this remix uh, uh, on my budget and then uh, I knew it was gonna take off because it was him mm. so and then I'm kind of emotional because I'm like this is what you know what I mean so I'm having the girlfriend ex-girlfriend moment <laughs> All in one time, I didn't know what to do with it. And then it had the nerve to live in number one for like as long as the original version. I was like, y'all not going to let this go away? Y'all just want to keep on with this? What are we doing here? And it became the, the official company, remix. The, the, the record company never said, we're not going to have it? or No. They, they riding the wave. They was riding the wave. Yeah, I would have rode the wave too. I would have been like, I'm sorry. I know yes. you. Yes. I would have rode that wave too. That I'm was sorry. he pulled that out of his trick bag. That was not salute to Slim. Thug. That was not that's, the original that's remix. The way thugs do it. Yeah, that he was just, like his thug love letter to me. You know what I'm saying? A little bit, but not really, because he was really like, ah, I don't really know what I want to do. I did not know that story, and, or if it was told to me, I don't remember it. Yeah, and he didn't even call to warn me, text me nothing. I wow. just I just heard it on you know when after it was Terry done played. already put together. It was on the radio. Y'all had it. Listen, man, there's a lot of things that happen. I can't do nothing about it. <laughs> and That's the fact that y'all didn't even hit me and say, Listen, it's Are on you your aware? record. I'm thinking if it's on your record, mm -mm. you approved it. We like, oh, this is gangster. It was so. not approved, but it was cute. <laughs> so I let it live. <clears throat> it's still like one of my friends. Look, I it's, still. I don't even remember what the remix with JD. I Thug, think they I kind of. To, I don't even remember it because the one that with Slim Thug resonates so. so I just hear his voice on that. When I hear that song, I hear his voice. Yeah. That's why at Latin, here we go, radio, rodeo time again. That was our first time performing it. Like at what? the rodeo. Last year, at the rodeo. The year before yeah. last, yeah. When I saw y'all perform, I'm like, that was that's our what we first doing? time like being on stage together. <laughs> what, <laughs> what was that like? That? It was hilarious because, like, right before that, he was trying to, I think I asked him at like the last minute, like, hey, would you come on stage and do this with me? He was like, yeah, yeah, all right, cool, that's cool. And so he was like, yeah, I don't know them lyrics. Can you send them to me real quick? I was like, I, what? <laughs> and we backstage minutes before we go on. We didn't even barely have a sound check. We did kind of, but we, you know, we kind of went over it and sound check a little bit. And he remembered the words and it just became a magical moment. It was probably like, my favorite part of the show. Like, I, okay. I really, Salute. it was exciting to be up on stage. You know what's, what's really cool about that is that these two people can have grown yes. past that moment and still be cool. Yeah, this is first love for both of us. Like, so right, we, no we had never had, I had never had no, feelings the city was for crazy about it. anybody like that. He had never been in love like that before. And this is what I'm saying. When you're out here adulting, y'all, like, y'all can really let the pettiness go. And when I tell you, we went through everything. <laughs> Every, everything. So if we can let go and still be cool and dab each other up when we see each other, it's all love. Like, I'm not saying y'all got to circle the block. I'm not, I'm not saying all that. What I am saying is that just be able to let go. Just let go of, you know, anything, any past hurts that you might have. Life is too short. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so glad that me and Slim are in the space that we're in. And it's nothing but love. Listen to Latoya Lucky. She said, let go and let God. Come on. Girl. Just let him. Girl, that's, you know. we, we, we go into break on that <laughs> for that moment right there. Slim got a whole break. He going to definitely call me for sure. For that. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, can't. I haven't said that since 1994. What? Well, you know, originally uh, the Mad Hatter was brought to Houston on Magic, Magic 102. 102. Yeah, yes. So I did nights there <clears throat> from 93 going into 94. 95, I started 97, 9 the box. Then I remember you from... Magic 102. And Dude. then I remember when that magically went away for some reason. I was like, wait, what is <laughs> Yes, it Mommy, did. Mommy, where's the station? Where's the radio? It That's what changed. I mean. Y'all was just the radio. It then. all changed. It all changed. Wow. But, uh, probably, I hate to say this, this is bad, but being here at that particular time in history was probably the greatest thing in my life. Uh, I never had imagined working at the box. It was wow. not on my list of things to do after Magic. I thought I was going to L.A. or New York. That got stopped because of this situation mm -hmm. at the box to do afternoons. And I'm like, man, this is great. Let me just go do afternoons. Funny now. Here I am doing afternoons. afternoons. But anyway, right. I went to the box to do that. And then <clears throat> really early in that, I was supposed to be doing mornings early on. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But I refused because it was a money issue. And I'm like, oh, no, nah, y'all got me messed up. Uh huh. So I continued doing 
afternoons, afternoons a little bit longer. And then finally somebody said, well, maybe we can give you a few more books. Got that paper so, bag. Get that paper talking. Get my, where's my bag? And then we turned it into a mad Can we get, where's the bag? Great run. Shout out to all the members, past <clears throat> members of the Mad Hatter Morning Show. Anyway, we're here with Latoya rem- Hold on. I remember I was a short term member of the Mad <laughs> Had her morning show. Don't act like I wasn't waking up at three thirty in the morning with y'all. Would you have considered? Uh, why you look? Why your body shifted like that? You, you I think I was whole, just trying to get comfortable. Okay, all right. Because I yeah, I'm, there was no shade. Uh, would you have considered at that time? I didn't even think that would would have been a possibility. But we were excited, and I think they were like, "Well, we really need a female co-host." Had her, and I'm like, "Bro, I." Whatever, whatever, whatever. But somebody like, hey, let's see if Latoya come up here and do this. I'm like, man, it's five o'clock in the morning. But you did it. I was there on time every day. And really, really good, too. But that was not your dream of what you wanted to do with life. You know what? Let me say this. And this is let me let me give some history real quick. Okay. because Torn, you were the first person to play that song on the radio. Remember, I bought it. I brought it to the station. It was not officially out like that. And I don't think it was. I don't was remember. It? I don't remember. Don't have me lie to you. Cause I really don't terrible. think Torn was out like that. Okay. I don't think Torn was out like that. And you just brought it up and we just And I it. brought it up because I knew it was coming out. You're the Tory Luckett. And, dog, and so. yeah, we, we, the, we the homies. Dog. And so I think at that time, you know, I wasn't promoting anything. I wasn't promoting the album or the single or, or anything like that. So I had that time and I was super excited about, you know, the opportunity. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It yes, was it was fun. early in the mornings, and of course I would crash by 12, but like <laughs> it would take up my whole day. But I enjoyed it so much, and I've had the opportunity since then, since working with y'all. Other, other stations have brought me out. Um, I've done Ricky Smiley, all because of y'all, because mm. you guys decided to take a chance on me, and for what? It was, I don't even know if it was a month. I was coming up here really, was during it the morning long? show. It was See, a minute. Since this is when I need Jimbo. Jimbo remembers times and dates and ev- for everything. It That's was a few I, weeks. Wow. Okay. But I, I, I'm i telling you, I would not say no to radio. Really? Yes. And mm. especially with having on, two now. kids mm. and one. Here you go. Write that down. Especially with Victoria having Lucky. two little ones. Y'all need to drop another bag on these boys. Can okay. we get a bag, guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stop playing. Okay. But I just, I feel like. You know, it would be awesome with me being able to be here in the city. I didn't know know you lived here now, to be honest with you. I just asked Rob. Rob is the Clarence Avant of H-Town. Pretty much. Whenever I want to talk to somebody, like, I don't know if I usually ever, other than maybe Face Mob. And Slim sometime, but most yeah. of the time I go through If you want to get your cars manager. down, call Slim. <laughs> want, need new tires. But with you, job. It, was, it was the same <laughs> way. I just I always hit Rob. But I didn't know you lived here. I thought you lived in L.A. because you do movies and TV shows so I live often. between the two, but do I'm you? really here in Houston. I yeah. did not know that. Oh, yeah. I got I to gotta be here with my babies. Yeah. I, I thought the babies were there. I thought everything was in L.A. I moved did, everything back I, here. I, I, I'm not going to ask particulars, but when did you move back to the city? Two years ago. Did you? you yeah. did? I didn't know that. But yeah, I was in Dallas. That. But then I moved right. here. Okay, yeah. Yes. I do. Yes, yes you I was in, in Dallas, Dallas. And then. We won't have to get I, I, into that and story. And then boom, boom, and sh- <laughs> wah, ah, and had to pivot, and now I'm at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Boom, blam. <laughs> <laughs> so, that part of your story, this is going to sound bad. I have no interest in the Dallas part of the story. That's it, man. That's fine with you. Hey, I, that's fine with me. I, I, I just know that, you two know. Two beautiful babies that I love so much came out of that part of my life. And I am, I am beyond. How's blessed. it being a mom? What? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I need a nap right now. It is the most rewarding thing that you could ever do in life. It, it is, um. It's it's a moment by moment thing. There's no we don't get an instruction manual on how to raise kids. No one, you know. I mean, but you got your parents. Can't you just go ask them like, hey, what my mama you- live with me. What you talking about? <laughs> and I still be like, wait a minute, what do I? Hold on, what do I do with? Because th- he's crying about something that, you know, it's a it's that. But you really have to just go with your instincts, your yeah. motherly instincts, yeah. and that's what I can literally be somewhere and I'll be like. Jenna's coughing. I need to go bring some cough medicine to school. And they'll... I think it's a beautiful process to watch because, you know, I just recently decided to jump into the baby game. You don't know? What? Oh, yeah. I have, Wait, a, hold on. I have a child that's a year and a half old. Okay. So, First you know, I had the two adopted young ladies. And they out there adulting it. You didn't know that either? Wait. Had her. Hold on. Now... I wasn't I... really good at sharing information No, you were pri- with my life. You talk about being private. 
I'm, there is no celebrity that I know that is more <laughs> private than Matt Haddock. I don't care what your name is. We don't know none of Haddock's business at all. He ain't want to tell nobody. It's he not ain't that got I didn't to tell want to nobody. tell. I just, uh, it's not, it, I, I don't even it, know it, what side of town you're from at this point. Like I, I, I represent the Mo. Okay, well, people, well, well yes. That, no, no, that no, is I in say, the song. I say, that, I, say, I say that very proudly if you ask. I've, I've been in the Mo for a long time since I've been here. Hatter, when did you, where did kids come from? This is so old. My kids, the oldest one is like, going, just had a birthday. She is now 27. She almost 30 years old. I ain't know about this. <laughs> I ain't never seen your children. I done been in this man's face for I don't know how many. He has literally known me since I was 13 years old. <laughs> and I didn't know you had kids? Yeah, I, early on. Well, the first one, that's a whole nother story. So, but Ooh, was, that sounds was, juicy. Should we take another break? <laughs> Should we get, should yeah, get some piping hot tea some, going? Well, like I said, sometimes in life things happen. But anyway, mm-hmm. but there was some mm. adopting going on along the way. Okay. But anyway, uh, so I have two girls. Uh-huh. And then uh, mama said, hey, man, I need one for the road. And I'm like, uh. So you, ha- you have. Three okay. kids. And son or daughter. So, yeah, he's a, he's a boy. Prince you Chubby Rock. You got your Rock. boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old? He what? is a year and a half. <gasps> Uh, and I might be wrong on that. He could be almost two in July. He's a cancer. <sighs> what? For day number one with no cancers. But wait, hold on. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to this. This is your son, not grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be clear on all. I'm doing my math. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, it's the Mad Hatter Show. I am wanting math. to know why you. Why are we going to the secret? <laughs> why are we being secret? We got secrets. Being, I just told man, you one of my listen, secrets. Listen, okay. I, Short break and anything you want to ask me about Prince. Chubby oh yeah, Rock, we go. I'll need to know we, after coming we, from we the break. Go, on, go ahead. Go hurry up to the break so we can get back. <laughs> hurry up to the break so we can get back. I think I got things I want to know. I Honestly, was, guys, I didn't think that I would be doing this again. Uh, I was tempted to say morning show, but I just <laughs> <laughs> kind of let like, let it go. I heard that there are a couple of people up there still having this problem, but no, it's the afternoon show. I got to get some. I got to get a group of people to do that. But anyway, oh uh, did not think I would be here again, but here I am again. And uh, a, a good friend of mine said, "Hey, man, you really started everything. I know you felt like you were supposed to end everything at the you know university because you went to I went to TSU doing mm-hmm. my thing over there, operations manager, content director, blah 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 blah." Then my friend said, hey, man, I know you feel like you started at college radio, you know, yes. black college radio. So this is where it should probably end. Then one of my, my friends came like, nah, you started here in Houston at Magic 102. Wouldn't it be great to like if you're going to end, like, mm-hmm. end on a big note? And I said, mm, let me think about that for a little while. And let me get back to you. <laughs> well, this is a mighty big note. So anyway, I'm here with that. And uh-huh. On the last episode of the Mad Hatter Morning Show, Latoya Luckett just found out that I had a family with children. Oh, look how he accidentally said the Mad Hatter Morning Show. I heard oh, it. I caught I, it. Yes, I you did. Yes. And oh, I'm so I'm glad about okay. it. On the Mad Hatter Show. That, I love it. That's because so, you're used to it. And I thought, I, I assume if you follow me, I every so often I do post Prince Chubby Rock because he's an influencer that gets paid from my label and because so, he's so, gorgeous so no because he has to work for his own money even no, as a baby no. so uh, no don't do my little man <laughs> first of all can we get into how matter Matt had is so private about things i know two things major things i kept first of all i'm in the studio with him i keep looking over at his ring fang and i said <laughs> oh, no, where that come from because i i know Why we ain't seen each other in a minute cheating ring but they women get like because and now i'm, lo- I'm looking at wifey's picture and that, and I'm she sorry, has a, a thing on there yeah it's she got a thing on mighty there. nice she got but i didn't even know you were married let alone had kids plural children children <laughs> i didn't know you had two daughters i didn't know chubbs had just been born i just feel left out i think we well, need to go okay, see a therapist now, i haven't been on radio so I, that no, has a lot to do with Chubb's part of it. I did not talk about my daughters a lot when I was at the box. And like I said, there was particular reasons for that in protecting them and mm-hmm. all kind of other stuff. They wanted a couple of people wanted to do stories on like on television. Oh, that's such a beautiful story. Can we put you on TV? Oh no, we no. can't we can't do that. Can we get into this beautiful wife of yours? You can though? get into anything. My wife is beautiful. Gorgeous. She, she works in HR. She's she is so humble and laid back. She was really, she was a defining moment of, hey, man, uh, I know how you feel about radio. So if we're going to go back, I just don't need you to bring the attitude with you. So uh, she made a couple of stipulations. She knows you. And, uh, you know, I'm a Pisces. You know how we get my Pisces That's sister. right. You are a Pisces. Yeah, you it's know how me, we It's me, you, and Paul. When's yeah, yours? Paul, well, mine's the 15th of March. Okay, you're right after us because yeah, we're the 11th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
But your family is beautiful. You. You I just am a little. Door. I don't. I don't know. I'm everything. trying not to be petty. No, be, be whatever you are. I just went. Man, we just talked about an ex of yours. Come I just on. feel like we family, and there's some things that we should me. know. I love. I ain't getting no Chubby. Christmas card. I, I have not done a Christmas With card. With the you family. Know, listen, over the it. last four years, I've just been operations manager, telling other people what to do, mm-hmm. loving that life, and it's literally go to the gym, go to work, go mm. get Prince Chubby Rock. I take him to school in the morning oh. I pick them up in the afternoon oh. which this presents a problem with that but that's another story for another time but that's my oh, thing so it's always yeah. just us hanging on the weekends like I said my two girls they're older now they yeah. doing their own thing trying to figure out life they occasionally oh, call my, well my kids call my, almost every day uh, but I talk to them just you know the niceties they're beautiful people very nice people. You did a good job. I did not, man. Uh, they just some people just grow up and have a nice gene. It has nothing to do with me, but they're good people. D- one of them having a little bit of problems now, trying to just figure out being an adult. It can be well, rough, that can be dope, especially yeah. these days and times. But she's doing. Yes. I'm very proud of all of them. They doing their thing. So that's that. Prince oh, Chubby Hatter. Rock is my dog. I've never really seen the family side of Hatter. This is my first time after. That's I all mean, I've been about. I'm, I I'm for still... real have known this man since I was 13, 14 <laughs> years old. Never heard him talk about family. To now know that he is a husband and a father is just. I'm. I don't know what to do. With I'm done. I'm cooked. Okay, oh, I'm roasted, Lord. and I love it. You people, there is a soft side of Hatter. Oh, mm, absolutely, I can she has it. a lot to do with that. She has a lot to do. With I can't that. wait to meet wife she, if you let me. She's good people, very laid back. She's super laid back. You think I'm laid back and mm-hmm. kind of reserved? She's super, super. She looks like she make a good back. little rotisserie chicken. And she a, into vegetables and I can't, all that I knew kind it. Of. She probably only got a little box garden. She got the little box garden she, outside. She a nutritionist by trade, but she I works in it. HR. She's in, so she liked the run and all this kind of stuff. She want to do what's that thing they just had with Chevron where they just had like you run twenty six miles. She like oh we should do that next year. I'm like oh, oh. no. She, true story. She almost I almost died because of her. Because you know when you date wow, people, you, just you know you just running with them. So I can't let you punk me. Oh, I'm a man. you tried to keep up. I, and I did. And got laid out. And I was like, after we ran, I was like, man, I'm kind of feeling funny. I didn't have no taste in my mouth. This is true. I was in the hospital. So while I was driving home, I'm like, man, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Oh, I done drained all the resources out of my Are you serious? Oh, yeah, I was in the hospital. My, but my kids didn't even know. Was, I forgot what they said. I, That's I no had, surprise because you don't I, tell I people something. things. They said it, they had to put like three of those things, you know, them, like whatever. electrolytes and stuff whatever like that. Whatever that thing is, they hang up and they had to flush out. I'd be It was crazy. Yeah, I, I needed like three of those. It was crazy. Oh, I'm like, okay. man, she almost oh, killed me, dog. So you got to stay with the person to almost kill you after running. No. <laughs> I'm glad you did. As long as it wasn't like like she was physically trying to harm me, no. But she's she's a beautiful person, and uh, she was nice enough to give me an incredible young son. And oh. I just want him to grow up to be a basketball, football, scientist, lawyer. It's a lot of pressure. Book writer. <laughs> Okay, Rapper, the list goes singer, on. My God, producer, he's an Olympian. <laughs> What's happening Olympian, here? Track star. Ah, work at the post office. Good man. Okay. Just, just, just that. That's all. That'll make you proud. Nah, really. Whatever you want to do, I don't care. Oh God. My job is. To what if he goes in the radio? How are you gonna make feel about that? Uh, he's not doing that. Oh, well, 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 why not? What if he wants to follow in his father's footsteps? What's wrong with that? You've had success, major success. It's another, it's another day. It's another time. I think with technology, a lot of things are changing. He'll have different options. AI is going to be taking over a lot of things. Mm. He's going to be all into that because, like I said, he's a scientist, computer genius, um, astronaut, rocket scientist. He can work aboard. Scientist. You know. Anyway, uh, yep. we got uh, Latoya Lucky got some big stuff going on. She got another <laughs> to my business. Let's get back into her business as my co-host. All this week, I'll be having co-hosts. So uh, I want to get into her business. She's doing something real cool. We have not talked about her movies. We we stopped talking about her transition after she she did the mind blowing uh, Slim Thug got on my remix and there was never no permission to do that story. Never so after, said it like that. After, <laughs> Definitely, those were not my words. We will not. That is not a direct quote. <laughs> so uh-huh. after that happens, it changes the trajectory of your story. Av just walking in and out. Don't even worry about that. Latoya Lucky doing his thing. He works. Work still got to be done. Don't matter what we doing. The work still got to be done, baby. The work still got to be done. Golly, (laughs) work still got to be done. Latoya Lucky, thank you for being one of my co-hosts this week. Thank you so much. I know you got a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was honestly. She hit me with the yo. 
okay, that time is perfect because I got to get these babies to where they need to be, mm-hmm. just being an incredible mama. So, That's what I'm, look, uh, I'm mommy first. You got to be. Let me tell you, can I, one more thing I want to say about watching a mother with her child. I feel like I'm, because I'm, I look at everything almost like a scientist. Like I'm, I get to be front row with, you know, like technology. I love mm-hmm. it and all that kind of stuff. But watching a mother with child mm-hmm. and the dynamic between the two. Oh my God. It's, it's amazing. a beautiful thing. I mean, oh. you can watch the birth and all that. And that's truly amazing. Yes. But to watch, they have like a language. Mother, mothers have a language with their child that you as a father, you're not privy to. And you can even see his, what he, him and his mom, they act a particular way. Mm-hmm. He, the way he acts with her it's is different. totally different yeah. than the way he acts with me. Yes. And I just so and salute to all the mothers, man. Oh, thank I mean, you, Adam. Y'all just so gangster. Uh, and I just like, I love having this front row seat of watching how this thing develops. You know what I'm saying? But they have a special, like, because she's super, super laid back. Mm-hmm. Shows no emotion about nothing. But when she's around him, they oh, like, yeah. they, they have a conversation. They talking. They laughing and playing. And I just like, man, I get, I get front row view of this, man. You can't, you can't pay for this. It man. is the most beautiful thing. I mean, especially mine are, are three and five. So their personalities are developing. They're, you know, very talkative now, very expressive <laughs> about they, what they want and what they don't want. Um, they still want their huggy time. Um, but I just love, I love when we get to cuddle. Mm. Cuddling my babies and them, you know, want to get all up under my neck. I mean, they they were there. They were literally in my womb, yes. next to my heart, my yes. organs yeah. for nine months. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's where they feel most comfortable and safe. And I can feel that. I can literally feel their bodies just relax and go, ah, when they're with me or they're, you know, laying on my chest. I just, I love it. I'm glad. Okay. Since we're still here, let me ask you this. Because mine is already at a point where he has determined that, oh, mm-hmm. these are vegetables. I'm yes. not really into it. Oh, no, my like kids now, love vegetables. Oh, no. Mine, I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. One day he saw green stuff and like he he put it together. Oh, I ain't digging anything Yucky. that's green. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, he all his verbals are not there yet. Yeah. But we'll <laughs> say, but he can do this. I put some letters in front of me. He like, no. <laughs> yep, right. I ain't got no words, it, but I do got no. And it's he, not. He got mm-hmm. no. I'm like, hey, man, you don't want a little piece? Look, I'm going to eat a little piece. He's and that's like, for you. <laughs> I gave it to him. He like, nope. And we, we have a dog, believe it or not. And he gave it to you the dog. You are a full blown white picket fence family man over here. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with I'm myself. I'm not telling you anything. Look at that. You got, got a dog? You got the dream, the house, the dog, the kids, the white picket fence, the gorgeous wife. Y'all go on vacation, though, y'all. We did. We just got back. From See what Oregon. I'm saying? The whole family was out there. Too. Come all of her, on. All of, she has sisters. So all of her sisters there, mom, oh. dad. It was great. We took pictures together. It was cold out there. It was at the cabin. It was cool. It See, was yeah, cool. you doing that different stuff. I'm, I can't do that. Listen. I mean, I have. It could be cute, but I, I just I like to be cold. Nah, but yeah. it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. But anyway, who cares about all that stuff going on in my personal life? So anyway, we talked about our children. Yes. Uh, I gave y'all way more information than I intended to on that behalf. But we were talking about originally before we went down this narrow path of somewhere, uh, we got away from after the the fall of DC, mm-hmm. and you have to decide like what am I going to do? You start doing the music. Music is successful at some point while doing music though, and mm-hmm. having some very successful songs uh, and albums. You decide to start acting. Yeah, I'm just curious. Did you know you can act? No. Were you acting prior, and how did that transformation actually go down? I had done I done a stage play um, called Rumors. And uh, that traveled to a few different cities. And that was kind of like my first time, like, really doing some acting outside of, like, when we, when Destiny Child went on Smart Guy or the school play. OK, <laughs> nothing besides that. No commercials, none of that. And so I remember being here. This is when I was um, I was living. I had my little town home in River Oaks. I thought it was cute. <laughs> and I was out jogging at Memorial with my dad. And I uh, got a call from randomly from um, an agent at Paradigm. 
uh, agency and they have two offices, one in L.A., one in New York. They might have more, but those are the two that I knew of at the time. And they asked me, to, you know, did I want to take a meeting and possibly go into some acting? I said, why not? Flew down to New York, even though I'd never done this before, um, you know, decided that I would sign with that agency. And they sent me on my first audition. I knew nothing about the auditioning process. I didn't know how to read sides. I didn't know how to read a script break down none of that all I knew was I just gone on the stage play and I knew that I had to memorize what was on this paper that's all I knew okay I didn't know how to actually like you know do character research or just you know build a character building none of that and um I matter of fact I called over one of the girls who was I think she was the stage manager for the play to help me kind of read through the script and learn my lines and the first audition I went on was Preacher's Kid and I you know, went in for the role, I auditioned, and when I was done, uh, the casting agent came outside and she was like, I think you just booked this. I was like, what? I, huh? I did? And uh, she was like, yeah. And I ended up getting casted for one role, but then like a f- couple of days before we actually started production on it, they asked me, was I interested in playing the lead role oh, wow. um, of Angie? And I was like, huh? Wait, we didn't go on from not knowing anything about acting <laughs> <laughs> now getting like maybe a a background actor role, which is I'm totally fine with. I was just trying to climb the ladder to yeah. now I'm the main character. I'm mm. number one on the call sheet. Are you serious? And this is my first movie. Mm. So um, I just, who I took a scene by scene. I took a scene by scene and uh, it's now like a, a classic. Could you remember all that stuff? I'm always curious with actors if they're really remembering all Oh no, this. I remembered everything. Really? Oh yeah, I remembered every line, every every everything. And thank God for Troy Rowland who really helped me through that process and um I I since I've been bitten by the acting bug, I haven't did you I, ever go back and get an acting coach at all he, during this so time? So the coach that they had on uh, set with me at the time was Troy Rowland. Mm-hmm. And so I've kept him uh, since then. Um, wow. okay. So he he doesn't do, well, he is an actual coach, but we don't do like scene study together. We don't do like, I don't, it's not something that I do consistently, mm-hmm. but he was there for me every minute of the day for um, the filming of that movie. So um very grateful to him always um and yeah i just i love acting do you really i really do you don't have no new mo- movies like in the works right now I um like- i just well you know we were just on strike so right before the strike i did a movie called um one night stay for bt plus so it's just started streaming uh as of january 4th okay so you can go and check it out it's a thriller which y'all know I'm a scaredy hat. I don't normally do thrillers, okay? But it's a really, really good thriller. And um, MC Light is in it. Um, so many great actors are in it. Um, and I'm excited about it. So One Night Stay, it's on BET Plus. And yeah, be ready to be thrilled. Scared, <laughs> I guess. It is and- creepy, though. If you watch it, it's super creepy. And it has a great twist at the end. Okay. All right. We got to check that out. Mm-hmm. All right. It's Latoya Luckett in the building. For those that don't know, she got some other cool stuff coming up where she's actually going to be a host of something dealing with the folks that own this radio station. Yeah, just so, so we'll happened. talk about that yeah. next right here on Magic 102.1. That's Latoya Luckett. Yes, indeed. All right. During the break, I found out something that I was not aware of that Latoya Luckett is her kinfolk. Is yeah. Robert Glasper. Yeah. I love Robert Glasper. Who doesn't this, love Rob? This is my guy. Me, <laughs> because of your cousin, we got in trouble together be, with some stuff he said about Lauren Hill. <gasps> oh, this was here. This was when I was still at the box. What? Oh, he came in there. I, I can't believe this went viral. I can't believe you don't know anything about it. I did it. Oh, my God. It was crazy. He, he came in one day and just like how me and you sit yeah. there. And I'm like, man, you ever have some problems with some? It was just a. a, a it wasn't that much casual of a question. Casual conversation. Yeah, very casual. You ever had some problems with somebody in the studio? And it was like, like I rang a bell. Like, he'd been dying. He'd been wanting somebody to ask this question. Robert! I'm like, you want to know? I'm like, I looked at Mac. I'm like, yeah, like he got something to say. I'm like, bro, if there's something. No, I'll tell you. I'll oh, tell you. And then he just, he went in. Let it rip. He went in. Oh, no. He super, super went in. He was oh. telling all oh, the dicks. Wow. And it went viral after that. Yikes. And he hit me back. And I can't tell you what he said right now because we live on the radio. But, oh my was, God. but he didn't care. I'm like, hey, man, you sure you want to do this? He's like, man, whatever. And it got all the way back to Lauren. Mm. And she was upset. 
Mm. And she put his words on me, which I'm used to happening. Uh, hopefully one day uh, it will be cool out. But she was oh, upset. No, I, but he went. He, she, he went in, though. He, he went in, man. Oh, Super yes. went in. Well, that's but I didn't know y'all was I'm a, I'm a fan of both. So I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't know, know anything Hill, so about that. I didn't either. It didn't deter. It didn't make me not like Lauren Hill. But when you hear, because you know, you're learning about some of the yeah, dirt of the bit. Yeah, yeah. Like and then you learn that, you know, these people that you admire so much, you know, they might treat other people differently. But unfortunately, I still feel the same about Laura Hill. I still think she's one of the dopest yes, MCs and, and singers ever. And, you know, and if she by chance just, you know, have a little problem with you, I'm okay with living with that. My feelings still the same, so. Oh man, that's all. Oh, that's a sad story. But that's yeah, not sad, but your cousin is awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Man, amazing. I love Robert. Robert was performing in a park somewhere, and all of he like, I know Matt Hatter's out there. He started doing the roll call. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I promise to like goodness. That's it was like just him. so miscellaneous. He's out there doing his thing, and you know, your, your cousin, Robert's just different. I know it's jazz, but he, he, he is hilarious. Yes. He's just different. It's like stand up and jazz. When you see him live, it's like stand up comedy. But that's what's so good about it. I think it brings people in, especially younger people. Yes. They, you know, before I think, in my opinion, I'm sorry, my jazz says, it seemed to be only adult. It was for mature audience. Yeah, and it was a little stuffy, and you had the. Yeah. And he took it and gave it a like a hip hop. Kind yes. of like swag. He'd be up there with his red fun, cup. And he don't care. Sipping. Yeah, he got all his, like, all his pianos around. He, I, I he's him. in the middle of like four or six, he's I don't great. know how many pianos. He's great. And he's playing all of them. I should have got him up here. I got to call him. Sipping up. his red cup or whatever is in it and just <laughs> being funny Orchids. and crazy. Sometimes he has a shirt on, sometimes he doesn't. He don't care. You know, he doesn't care. And I just have always loved that about him. He has always been true to himself. He yes. is an amazing, an amazing. I can't believe y'all haven't done anything together. He play piano we have nothing. talked about it but we never we and we lived yep. well, he just moved to LA so he's I, always on the move too. so both of y'all always on the move he's everywhere yeah and by oh by the way I have to shout out my HSPBA fam because that's when we really kind of like dove into the music scene all together uh, Rob was there Brian Michael Cox B. Cox was there shout out to Cox Beyonce was mom. there um, gosh who was everybody everybody was went to HSPBA Major shout out to Major love Major we were all at HSPBA man all the people that go to this school super cool like I'm cool with you know? all of them I wonder yeah. how that is that's interesting HS, HSPBA was the child that was the school <laughs> yeah <laughs> You got like you got some other stuff you want to say about. I ain't got no. Okay, mm, all right, well, no tea. All right let, let's move no on. No tea over here. Let's move on to some uh, promotional tea. This Why is not? actually something that's really really cool that you're doing the sixth annual Urban One Honors yep. Best in Black. A lot of people getting honored, but you get to be the backstage pass host. What exactly is that? Yes, I'm the backstage pass host, and I also host at the red carpet. So um, basically, anyone that came through the carpet, I got to interview some wonderful people and just kind of see what they were up to. So all of the, you know, the fashion, the dress. Oh, gosh. When I tell you, these people were dressed to the tens, okay? They were dressed, dressed tens across the board, baby. And it was just a good time, you know? You know how we get together, we ain't seen each other in a while. It'd be like the family reunion feel. That's how the red carpet was. They were, hey, girl. You been up to? Yes, come on here. All of that, <laughs> and it was just—it was a good time, and we came to honor some greats. I mean, Dion Warwick, Mary J. Blige, Tiana Taylor was in the building. Um, Chloe, Chloe Bailey was yeah, in the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you many didn't greats. All of them. They have Dion Warwick, Chloe, Frankie, Beverly. Frankie Beverly. Come on, Frankie Beverly. How is it that Frankie Beverly never got a Grammy? I, is that another a, conversation for First of all, it's so many people. I didn't know Jodeci didn't have a Grammy. It's so many people that didn't get a Grammy. Snoop but, has um, never got a Grammy. Uh, here's He's been thing. nominated. We need to stop allowing other people with their places, forms. We need to stop being upset when we don't receive accolades from their deals. Yeah. Yeah. And because I, because look, I fell right into it. Oh, man. Frankie didn't get a Grammy. But for us, he gave us everything that we need. Everything. All these people gave us everything. So even if we, if they did not receive a Grammy, which I, I get it, it's great if you can yes. get one, sure. Uh, but the love that you get from the people and what you've given to us is Come to on. me very important. That's a real thing. That's so. a real thing. Because sometimes I know 
entertainers get super disappointed when they're up for something, they get nominated for something. Or, shoot, I've never been nominated. Uh-oh. I've never been nominated for anything. I won two Grammys with Destiny's Child, but as a solo artist... You got one. I, I got two. Some of them out there, man, they ain't get nothing. I'm grateful. But <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, as a solo artist, I've, I've never received an, an award or a nomination for or anything. You know what? Like, I'm gonna have a hood award. Oh, and I'm gonna okay. give you one for. You know, I'm gonna give you right. and Slim um, Thug one for torn. Slim got an MTV award with Beyonce, so he's checking. So he's good. Check okay, yes. that's true. I forgot that he was. He's on good. There. Well, hey, you know, I'm just curious because I know y'all still system talking about B. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about what uh, uh, Jay said at the Grammys? He seemed to get a little under his collar, like, "Yo, how does?" My lady get 23 Grammys, but she ain't never got album of the year. Tell me how that worked. Um, you know, he he basically said the math wasn't mathing. <laughs> it's worried. The math was not mathing. And it's, it, it, it's, it's, it is strange. Mm. You know, this woman has made history. Sure Especially enough. with sure. the Grammys. Sure. Sure. sure, No one's won more Grammys than her. And sure. you would think that with all of the albums that she's given Just us. Just one? I mean, come on. I feel it. I you know, feel it's it. and every time she's up for one, it does feel like a disappointment when she doesn't receive it because I know how much work she puts in no doubt. to create it. Absolutely. It's not even just an album. It's a movie. It's a movement. So I know. You know? I met my wife mm-hmm. at a Beyonce concert. As you should. <laughs> just go to eat. He's going to be at church or a Beyonce concert or a square home food. You know, it would that surprise me, you know? Everybody's, you know, she probably had on her still uh, a little No, you know what it was? She was cracking jokes the whole time, and by chance, we sat beside each other. Oh, by chance. She, oh, it was the me she, 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 she didn't know who I was. She oh, thought J Mack was mad. Me-cute. She didn't know She didn't know who I was, but I was sitting next to her, and the whole time, she was cracking jokes. To me, the funny thing is, I don't think she's funny. She's probably hilarious. But but you that night, I was laughing at everything. Oh, you thought she was cute. Oh, oh, oh God, you're so funny. See, I that see brain, pictures you... of her. I see pictures of her. Oh, he was up there kicking. Oh, okay. okay. Right. A good laugh. So, so it's just six pictures. annual Urban One Honors <laughs> Best in Black Backstage Pass Host Interview Honorees Performers Presented Houston's All the Toya Lucky is going to be in the building. Yes, indeed. Make sure y'all check it out. Sunday, February 25th at 7 p.m. on TV One. She's going to be on this. Be good. All right, I'm gonna keep you for a little bit longer, and then I'm gonna okay. let you get out of here because I know you want to go uh, see your family and things like. That. I only got a couple more minutes before I gotta get the kids from school, so <laughs> we gonna have to wrap this up. Not playing. You know, we, I gotta get to my babies. We, we will wrap up momentarily right here on Magic 102.1. The toy look it's in the building. Oh my goodness, I thought I'd never say that again. She was saying, look at you. Look at you saying it. Look at me. Look at you saying it. Look at us. Look at us. Oh, my partners is... Okay, Okay. so Latoya Luckett is in the building. I had a great... Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I told you that, hey, I want you to be a co-host with me. It's Mm going to be my first week back. I don't know what I'm doing. I have not done anything in radio whatsoever as a personality or talking and running my trap for... Four years, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, you got the podcast and all that stuff, but just being on the radio daily doing your thing, I, I gave that life up and didn't really see myself coming back to it. So, Hata, it's in you. Uh, it's in you, honey. Uh, I don't, it's just I, natural. I won't, I won't say all that, but I appreciate it and thank you. Now, before you get out of here, <clears throat> yes, I'm, I, I got there. I call these quick questions. Oh, Lord, he done wrote some down on a spiral notebook. Yeah, Y'all, yeah, yeah man. I got, it's just something I'm trying out at, in this new position here. Some things I want to try out. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I got this from um, what's the King brother? What's King's first name? Used to interview everybody. I can't think of his name. Used to, Larry King. It? There you go. See, okay. I knew you'd be on top of it. That's why oh, I yeah. got to get you in here every day with me. Oh. But then that's another story for another Gosh. time. I got to go ask for some bags first. Larry King used to do these little little quick questions and uh-huh. stuff. You like got the that. glasses and everything. See, look she, at you. Now she's saying I'm blind, but that's I'm not saying I'm blind too. I'm these these cool, but they they my bifocals. Yeah, I need them. <laughs> <She> said, <"They laughs> <my bifocals." laughs> All right. Okay. So here I'm gonna ask you a series of them, but they they're kind of quick. So first okay. of all, your mm-hmm. favorite color is red. Really? Yeah, that's why I always wear a red lip. Did not know that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your favorite word? Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Straight from the H. Favorite person? What? <laughs> uh, first, hold on. Um, well, I have favorite people, little people, and they're my kids. I let that one ride. Can't beat them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Favorite book. 
Charlotte's Web. <laughs> Charlotte's Web? <laughs> no, for real. Um, Nav is Charlotte's Web is Charlotte's Web. I love it? Charlotte's Web. Okay, keep it real. You don't yeah. got to change up for nobody player. Yeah. All right. Uh, what or whom inspires you the most? That's a great question. Um, I have so many phenomenal women in my life. Um, I, I mean, I have to start with, of course, like my mom watching her be a single mom and What's raise up, two kids. Mm. Shout out to Mama Pam um, and do her thing was definitely inspiring. Um, my grandmother. It's it's so many. I'm telling you so many women that I owe. Whew, I don't want to say my life because I owe that to the Lord. Mm. But I want to say, like, who I watch every day and go, wow, y'all still doing it. Y'all killing it. And you keeping your head up through it all. So I would just say shout out to my tribe. Everybody. I love that. Okay. In my life. Okay. Yeah. Your tribe. My tribe. My tribe okay. inspires me. Favorite food. Oh, now, how do you know I like to eat? How are you going to do this? Why, why, why would you? You know what I've been into recently? Tell me. Fried rice. Give me some good fried rice. Chinese but it got to be right. Yeah, give just... me some good fried rice. But it got to be right now. It can't is be. It like chicken in it, mm -mm, vegetables, shrimp. shrimp. I need shrimp. And I need, I don't I don't need a lot of soy sauce. Re okay, maybe me and you can got hang it. after all. Because yeah. that's one of my favorites, bro. Come on, man. I love a fried rice, but I try not to do it because I know it ain't. A right yeah, for you. Yeah, I know. But, what do you mean? Like, what's wrong with it? You got egg in it, a few vegetables, carrots. <laughs> Y'all gonna make it right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Little onion. What's wrong? You got vegetables? Uh, it's rice. Anything white ain't right. Uh, look, I mean, brown I rice. Okay, I don't want nobody to take that the wrong way because somebody will read No, I know what, what they're saying. Say? They say, yeah. my, no, hold you on. Know, you know a people. white guy told me that anything white isn't right. And right. That, what he meant by that was white sugar, salt, yeah, yeah, food, flour, yeah. food. That's yeah. what he was saying. So Thank there's you, girl, this isn't good. a racial statement. Man, they gotta come up with a bad thing, This bro. is about <laughs> what's healthy for our bodies. There you go. Okay. But we still like that, though. That's one of my favorites, too. So oh, I love, I right, love food fries. Place, then. Here? Anyway, what's your favorite? What's the one place, I don't care if it's here or when you go somewhere like, hey, you got, Man. like mine is a place called Baldino's, but it's mm. when I go home, it's all the way back in North Carolina. Okay. And I don't care. And it's terrible. I mean, you shouldn't, it's, I, it's all the food You're that I don't You're not from Raleigh, are you? From where? Raleigh. No, are you I'm anywhere from, near I'm Raleigh? from a place called Favia. I'm from about 50 miles away from Raleigh. You should talk to the person in the next room. A oh, homeboy from uh yes oh. from Virginia but lives in oh wow you Raleigh, stretching out like that play? okay I, ain't gonna I mean I, when you said North Carolina I was like that's right yes you know how to pick them girl I mean <laughs> you know <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was that one time though and we oh don't do there. that don't do that <laughs> don't do that that's not fair that's not All nice right, uh, see if I knew more of your business I would be able matter of hey, fact man, I do know your business. That name starts with a C. And I like, hey, girl. Oh, my God. That's my really? dog. I do know that. I, you think I wasn't going to remember that one because I was a little girl How then. Do you know this? But I peeped. That, you probably learned that somewhere along nope, your travels. Nope, I saw the love connection. That's No, that's that's something you have to pick up along your travels. It was known, not just here at the station. No, nah, well, she's gone on to do really big things. Amazing so, things. Yeah. And so have you. Salute to her. I have not seen salute. her in years. But, I have. But we, we, we come across people who see people, and I'm like, oh, yeah, salute to her, man. Mm -hmm, I'm one night. of those people. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so lesson you have learned. Uh -huh. uh, let me see. Oh, no, person oh you, you didn't ask me my favorite restaurant. My favorite restaurant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to say here in Houston, shoot, I got I feel like I got to name them all. You can't come to Houston now without going to get a trill burger first of all uh <laughs> and that's just that's that on that okay that's that on um that. breakfast club i'm gonna definitely be in there getting some cheese grit with rob g and also <laughs> getting uh my crispy pancakes oh gosh i love seafood you know what i love here you know what i love here there's a place called lock bar and they have the best crab cakes i don't know what that is baby when i tell you these is better than dc crab cakes they so good. They so good. <laughs> and don't y'all start, uh, don't y'all run over there because if I have to wait in line to get my crab case, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be some furniture moving. All right, we moving. But Lock Bar <laughs> is my spot. Honey. All right. Person you'd love to have a one on one conversation with, and it could be dead or alive. But if you could have a one on one conversation with this person, who would it be? I know who I want to say, but it's going to make headlines, so I can't do that. Oh, wow. Is um, that deep? No, I, 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 ooh, Michael Jackson was the person I always wanted to meet. 
like I would. Who ain't? If you can stand yeah, alive, if we I all could gonna just, say Michael Jackson. Come I mean, on. But I need originality, real. child. I I would. I would all really. Right, I'm moving on. God dog. If it, and if not, cool. like I would really, I would really love to. And we've had conversation, but just like a a long conversation of just really sitting and talking and um, reminiscing, it would be B. Respect. I was going to, as a joke, say Beyonce, but then you say, and then I can tell. Yeah, it would be so her. Cause I, I really, as a, as a, as a homie, I would really just want to say, how's your heart? How are you doing? Cause I know mm. she's all over the place. She is She's being a balancing, being a wife, a mom, a mega and she star. Can't be, and then she can't be normal anymore. And she can't That's be, so yeah. Sad. So like I she feel. She can't just go to the mall and just, like, well, you. it's hard for you too, but you can. Do oh, it's some not that hard, baby. Normal. I can still go to Target. Okay? <laughs> I can go to Target, Walmart. I can go to Stop and Go if they still got them. I can go to Circle K, <laughs> baby. All right, I'm moving on. In my head, right. scarf. Last time you cried? This weekend. It was Sunday. Something made you sad? or was No, it, or, or I was, was so happy. happy. I was overwhelmed. I was at Brian Cox, B. Cox Brunch mm-hmm. uh, for Grammys, and they were honoring Dream, and it was a lot of the Atlanta squad. And when I left here after what happened with D.C., I went to Atlanta, which became, you know, like my second home. Mm-hmm. And that's where my life had to pivot. And I met so many incredible people, like so many incredible people. And for most of them to be in the room, like unexpected, I did not expect to see Chris Hicks, Brian Cox. I didn't, and of course he was. It was his brunch. I expected him to be there, but B was a part of that journey. Um, Terry Ross, JD, uh, then randomly my dancers, um, Maya McLean and her twin sister who tour with me, and they were uh, princess dancers. Wow. And they danced with me for most of my second album. And I was just like, what? And then Adria, my sister, who literally rescued me um, <laughs> after that whole situation, <laughs> she was there. I was like, I'm really, I, we ended up taking a picture and it was overwhelming for me. And I was like, mm. why am I so emotional? I got to keep these lashes on and try and be cute for the rest of the day. <laughs> and they sliding off and I can't, I'm just a high That's mess. Beautiful. It was. That, I, that was over. I did not expect to be overcome with emotion like that yeah, because I was, I was so grateful for them. That's beautiful. Okay, okay. Childhood celebrity crush. Romeo from Immature. <laughs> and I made him my man. <laughs> I went from kissing the posters to kissing the lips. Okay. <laughs> That's a little tea nobody knew about. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that scandal on no, another. No, we're not. Somebody it's not a scandal. Like, it's not a scandal. It's not a scandal. It was short. the guys at Immature. I, it was short. It was, matter of fact, we, I was in love with that man. When I tell you in love with Romeo, with the, if y'all didn't know, it was the one with the patch, okay? So I was in love with Romeo J for so many years. Like, literally would have my little clear phone with the neon lights in it, talking to him and having imaginary conversations. Okay. Like, hey, boo, what you doing? You know? And then I would kiss his poster before I left the room. Like, he was all over my room. I had every write-on magazine that folded out into a poster. It was like a moment. And I remember crying my eyes out because I was supposed to have the chance to meet him when um, they came to do a show in Atlanta and they ended up going straight to the tour bus. That's another story. Turns out when our song came out, when No, No, No came out, we ended up seeing them at like a basketball. It was like a charity basketball game. And I think, you know, I was kind of over it at that point. I was like, whatever. And we ended up running into the in we ended up running into them and they were going to take us to something that was else that was going on in LA and he gave his number. But he only gave six digits. So all of us like went back to the hotel room cuz I was, you know, we had just gotten cell phones that, you know, that was new to us and we called every number until we found his wow. number. <laughs> I've never heard nothing about this. And then we got me. Yeah, he was my boyfriend. I never heard him say nothing about it or nothing. Because you won't. And, He's uh, a gentleman. He is. And we they were, don't do that no more. They don't make them like that. They sleep with you or whatever. No, that wasn't going on. We were just, we oh, we were literally like boyfriend and girlfriend crush. for a minute. And then he became my best friend. Jay became my best friend. So oh. that's why you wouldn't hear no mess. Because literally that's my, that's well, my homie. No mess. No, well, we didn't have no to mess. tell that story. We need real tea around here. That ain't what? <laughs> You asked who my crush was. No, no, it was no, 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 no. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, baby, right. I was in love with that man. Guilty pleasure. Mmm. Shopping. <laughs> baby, keep me away from the gallo, please. Just don't. Uh, visit biggest risk you think you ever took. Going solo. Mm, okay. I mean, I didn't go so I didn't take that risk, but because I 
let, can we like can we just make this can we say this so we can be done with it y'all if y'all don't stop saying we left the group we didn't leave nobody group okay <laughs> Really? Why? Why would we do that? I do if you see me, I do look like I got a little sense in me. Don't I, you feel I like think I got? People in this city know that you did not leave. Okay, so, so just, I did not leave Destiny's Child to go solo because okay, that it. would not have been smart. Nobody's yeah. gonna do that. That's a we were right at the peak of at that time. Yes, ma'am. Our success. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wouldn't do anything silly like that. That would have been just mm-hmm, ill advised. So. Didn't do that. Did not leave the group to go solo. But the guy, guy put it in my heart and I took the leap and I took the risk, you know, once that was all done to continue on my path as an artist. And look um, at you now. I, I, You know, look at you now. I'm not done yet. Hold on. Best compliment you ever received. You have the best personality. Or you're a light in the room. Let me get back to you on that one. Why? <laughs> you don't. Oh, you don't. Play. No, no, no. That, I can believe that. I can believe that because you do have a wonderful personality. Thank you. Uh, last thing that made you laugh really, really hard. <laughs> um, finding out all your tea. <laughs> I think it was really, really. Y'all, I ain't sharing nothing else on these airways. Just finding know out that. all your t- or watching you kind of like come to uh, uh, watching your face when I knew your tea about. <laughs> okay, all right. Your past uh, stand, relationship. You stranded on an island. You could only bring one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One person, one song. You got? I can't do. I got two kids. What you gonna do? That's I can't do on that. you. This is your how island. How long is we on the island for? You on you gonna you, you don't know how long you're gonna be on. You it could be forever. No. You're stranded on the island. There's hey, listen, man, this is my questions. You're stranded on the island, oh you get God. one song, you get one pick. I get one song. One. <laughs> you just I don't like this game at all. I can't have one person, I have two kids. I can't pick between my kids. It's not gonna happen. Uh I'm going to give you a strong pass. I'm going to give you a strong pass. If I go, well, you know, once I eventually, help, if I get married, if the kids is can come to, because they just going to be there anyway, then I would, I would, uh, a husband, you know, I would have, I would be with my husband. Okay, I love that. Yes. Right. But I want my kids there too. I don't. How I long before you get this. married? Huh? Favorite <laughs> song. <laughs> <laughs> What was the other question? Tata, you playing with me now. Hold on now. Uh, favorite song? What's my song? Yeah, what, what, of all time. Favorite song of all time. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be between Blow the Whistle what? and Don't don't You Worry About a Thing by Stevie Wonder. Like if don't I, you worry about I, a I, thing. That song, man, I, I don't care that. what mood I'm in, you play that, I'm smiling. How do we get all the way to Blow the Whistle? Because if you turn that on, I might break a nose. <laughs> <laughs> I when anybody knows me when blow the whistle come on move out the way. Now when you say you was getting married, what? ladies and gentlemen, Latoya. And on the next Luckett. break, <laughs> on the next edition of the Hatter Show, I'll let y'all know when she get married next time. Oh my god, you. you've always been good to me. Uh, I love your growth. Thank uh, you as a human being. Uh, thank you so much for for allowing yourself to come here and be exploited by radio. Um, <laughs> exploited is right because clearly this man was all up in my business uh, we're going to try to work on getting her to be a full time member of the Mad Hatter show that's another day and another uh, time we'll uh, talk about that he want me to be in the group <laughs> <laughs> you want to shout out to anybody oh shout out to my Houston fam y'all know I love this city come on now but you know my mama my brother GL Gavin Luckett I know you somewhere out there uh, shout out to my kids Gianna and Tyson my cuzzo Tiffany Hill uh, Tamika Thompson uh, Renee I could keep on going yeah that's why I'm about to give you the rap my song. dad <laughs> hey Daryl Luckett hey Daryl All right. uh, yeah uh, and what, my grandfather what give me, your, give me, what, give me your, a song I can go to right now like right now? Yeah. You want to, Old or new? Whatever you want. Blow Gonna the whistle. Go play blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Latoya, Lucky is in the building. LL right here on Magic 102.1.